What's going on, y'all? Love and Hip Hop, New York, Season 5, Reunion, Part 1. And it started off wrong. It started off on some bullshit already. Now, see, I told y'all Erica Mina was not going to be on... Who, excuse me, was not going to be on the show. Okay? Who gives a fuck? I honestly, after looking at part of this, you know, especially this first part... And how she started it off talking shit doing a pre-recorded interview with fucking Mona Scott. Everybody else is there. They're talking about, you know, right off the bat, they're talking about the relationship with, um, you know, Sin and Erica and all the people, whatever, on the show. And <clears throat> doing Erica's little, um, <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Oh, fuck. Doing Erica's little uh, interview with Mona. See, first of all, I can't stand when a bitch can talk so much shit throughout a season and then you know they can't be woman enough because at first we was kind of rooting for you a little bit oh okay we was kind of rooting for you a little bit erica then you start showing your fuck shit side and then you want to not you know show up like in that chrissy situation in that chrissy situation i i was very much here for you, you know, fucking that bitch up, okay? Because I ain't like the way she came at you and all that shit. But the way that you handled the sin situation, you really want us to believe that you was not cheating on that girl. Girl, get the fuck out of here. You really want us to believe that. Like, listening to, you know, I know when you break up with somebody or whatever, you sometimes, depending on what happened, you become scorned and, you know, they ain't shit all of a sudden. But just the way that she was talking about sin in that interview with uh, Mona, it just... It just was like, girl, did you really care for this girl? Or was you really using her for a pawn or a storyline or whatever? I was a little bit confused. Um, speaking on that, basically, she was talking about everybody. And I'm like, so you going to talk shit on a pre-recorded taping, but you couldn't come in person and talk shit to these people's faces. You talking about how they beneath you. <clears throat> Um, everybody there is only there because of a storyline off of you, which is partly true. But then maybe they spend like Chrissy, you know, she had a beef with you for maybe two and a half episodes. It's like 15, 16 episodes in this season. Okay. It was not all about you, boo boo. Sin, she had a couple of episodes with you because that shit was carried on from the storyline from last season. But other than that, her shit was not hindering on you, okay? It was not based upon you, all right? Diamond, her shit wasn't about you either. Johnny Blaze, her shit wasn't about you. Tara, Peter, all of them, her shit, they shit wasn't about you. Everybody else, Rich, it wasn't about you, okay? And you sitting here talking about something, let them get your 15 minutes of fame or whatever because I'm, I'm letting them get that 15 minutes of fame off of me and all this shit because why would I want to be there with when I'm going somewhere different and better in life. Bitch, you acting like you finna be on the big fucking screen. Like you didn't got millions and millions upon millions in the motherfucking bank. Bitch, all you did was caught fucking Bow Wow. And Bow Wow probably got your ass out of fucking boredom, okay? To make himself look good and feel good. That somebody of a low quality standard like you will want him still when he's still trying to pay child support and host the 106 in part. You talking so big and all this shit. Okay, you talking big shit now. All right, like you got all this stuff. Oh, you snagged a fucking rapper. He's not even an A-list rapper no more, okay? When was the last hit that Bow Wow had? All right, let's let's be fucking clear, okay? I ain't even trying to take away from what Bow Wow's done, but that ain't no motherfucking prize right about now. And you doing all this big talk as if you're really fucking established. Baby, no, you're where you're at because you sucked the motherfucker dick and he fell so-called in love with it. Okay? That's it. That's fucking it. And he was stupid enough to say, oh, I want to wife you up. That's the fucking reason why you're where you're at right about now. And the way you talking about them having a 15 minutes or, you know, you don't want to be associated with them or, you know, or I seen um sin at the bar and all-star and I left her there where I found her, whatever. Bitch, you acting like, you know, you really build people careers and shit like that, which you really didn't. And you're acting like you're with Bow Wow and, and, and y'all either married now or about to get married this April. So, hey, who fucking knows? Who actually, who fucking cares? But the fact of the matter is, you acting like <clears throat> you doing all this stuff as if something cannot happen. Something probably won't happen. Possibly happen that, hey... Six months down the road, you'll be still scrambling trying to get alimony from this dude because alimony or or whatever, you know, spousal support because y'all done broke up mm -hmm. and you don't know where to go, okay? Well, you need somebody to pay your bills 
And then you're going to be back on reality TV trying to get those checks. Because, baby, you still doing club appearances. If you're so established, why you still doing club appearances? Why your man still doing club appearances for his goddamn birthday? Like, come on. I get it. Some people do that. But take that away and let y'all just sit there. We'll see how fast the money drops. Okay, don't don't sit there like you really that established that you can sit there for 20 plus years and not do a damn thing. All right. Come on. Don't downgrade. Don't down talk people on a platform where you started at. You ain't upgrade on yourself. Bow Wow kind of upgraded you because if Bow Wow didn't come into the picture, your ass will still be on this motherfucking show. All right. Get the fuck out of here. And then, you know, you're talking about acting stupid like you didn't know what was going on between you and sin and and, and trying to make sin look like the bad guy do you want to down talk her like she wants shit bitch you just showing how much shit you ain't okay so it was whatever did y'all see when um uh, little raymond came out there the little boo thing and uh, <laughs> the way sin face not sin but cisco face changed cisco was like i said oops Somebody still feel away, and he forced himself to clap. And they was like, "Yeah, I, I love her. That's my boot thing." And then he, they put the camera on him. He was like, "I said, bitch, you ain't fooling nobody." But seeing, you know, you ain't gotta say shit. Like I seen somebody tweet that shit to her. I was gonna say some, uh, why you ain't, uh, you should have trash talked the shit out of Erica when you had the chance or whatever. And she was like, "You don't have to talk down on trash that's already trash." Okay, and I was like, you know what? Take the high roll. And Erica talking about something. I could put a whole bunch of shit out there on her and she won't be able to come back from it. Bitch, come on now. Stop with these idle threats. I put it. I believe it. I would have believed it more if you would have brought your ass to the reunion and said all this shit. But she didn't. Child, look. This reunion ain't shit. This reunion ain't shit because they started off with Erica and this pre-recorded bullshit. And then they just going to keep on giving it to us. They got Kim ass. Samantha's mama, listen, listen, Kimbo Slice sent up on that goddamn stage. Kim got her motherfucking suit on. She got herself like the cool rose in. She got her glasses and everything. She looking clean though. She looking clean though. But, you know, Kim, you was doing a little a much. You was doing a much because they was talking about Mandisi's and um, Candy's relationship and then, um, I was surprised that they had Samantha up there, um, little man DC's mother, and they was all sitting on the same couch. You had Judy, you had, uh, Samantha, Judy, and Van DC's on the same couch, and I think Yandy too. No? Maybe. No, Yandy was on a different couch. Girl, fuck it, I don't give a shit. But, um... Kim was over here, okay, and Kim was just going off at first, you know, from what we gathered and what we found out is that Judy still didn't pay for the dry cleaning, okay, and Kim just wanted her uh, camera shine, okay, Kim got up there like, you ain't gonna fuck with me, nigga, I didn't do a hard time, okay, that's how she got up there like, and I was just confused, like, girl, sit down, mister, mm, I don't wanna say that, could you just sit down, um, ma'am, because you're doing a lot, you're doing, you're doing a lot, we get it, you hard, you hardcore, you hear little man DCs, they arguing over who, you know, he spent more time with while, um, man DCs was away, and Kim was like, you know he was with me, you know he was with me, and here go the thing, Kim said, get me up in here cussing, and I don't even cuss, and I said, bitch, you called Judy all types of bitches doing the show, okay, shut up, okay, just shut up, I mean... That scene I could have did without. It, it was it was comedy relief, I guess Kim was, because everybody and their mama was just laughing at her like, and I don't know, I don't know, it's because, I just, I don't want to say it's because she's gay, she's a stud or whatever, it's just that she was just putting on so much, and it was just a little bit irritating, but I kind of, I chuckled, I, I really chuckled. So then they bring up Johnny Blaze and um, Rich Dollars, doing one of these segments, they ask Mendeecy, it was the Mendeecy and Yandy thing, and they asked Taro, how did she feel about, you know, uh, what Mendeecy did, you know, leaving, playing games about the baby being in the hospital. I said, girl, that, what, what did Taro have to do with it? Why is Taro on the stage? Why they, you know, put everybody else down at the bottom and bring the people that's in the situation up on the stage. That's what they should be doing. Because this is throwing me off a little bit like, why is there six people on the stage and you're really only talking to two or three of them? And it's like, girl, put them back down on the couches, you know? But anyway, Johnny Blaze, Precious Paris, Rich Dollars. 
we get into the relationship between Johnny Blaze and Rich. Rich is a pompous ass, arrogant ass, cocky ass asshole, okay? You know, Rich acts as if he's really fucking popping, popping, popping in 2015 right about now. And he's really not, okay? You're making yourself ever more so the clown being on this show, all right? And then all your bullshit and your business be putting out there in the street. And you was really popping. Why you can't pay child support? Why are you getting re uh, arrested for child support? You should be worried about actually putting artists out and making money off of that instead of trying to get your dick sucked by these girls, okay? Because that's all that we see doing with um, Rich Dollars. And then Johnny, come on. Johnny, you do a lot. You fucked around, and just because a dude showed a little bit of concern, you fell in love when, you know, I guess you said Rich was the first person that really reached out to her when her um her boyfriend at the time got killed or whatever, and she fell in love. I was like, first of all, my boyfriend or my girlfriend or whoever the fuck, they die. If I really care for them and I really love them, I'm not going to move on within that time period and fall in love with somebody else. What the fuck? I mean, that's just me. That's just me. It's going to take a while. It's going to take a while. It's going to take more than a hi and a smile and a how you doing and is everything okay for me to just fall in love with you that quick. Bitch, it's taking me a minute to fall. Girl, no. No. Girl, girl, Johnny, Johnny, <clears throat> she ain't got no daddy. She ain't got no parents. That probably explains a lot of stuff, you know. She's just looking for love wherever she can get it or wherever she thinks it's love. So she's going to fall for the first person that she see. And Rich, I guess he's an older dude. So, hey, let me, you know, be my daddy. That's what it feel like. That's what it feel like. Because she's talking about something she still love him. And, you know, they're going back and forth about the dick pitch that he put out there. She put out there. Um, when they talked about Precious Paris, I was not here for the way that he was talking about her. Talking about some, you know... You can't fire somebody who was never hired. So how is this? And you weren't even on my management and all this shit. And I didn't do nothing for you because you wasn't with me. And you ain't establishing. You ain't this. I ain't taking away from her talent. Like, why you got to talk down to the girl like that? And she wasn't even talking shit. She wasn't even talking shit. And she, oh, excuse me, she wasn't even talking shit about Richie. She didn't say nothing negative in the sense that he, that needed all of that to come out. And she still didn't say bullshit about her, uh, about him. Johnny Blaze actually took up for her, okay? And I'm sitting there like, well, if it don't matter to you, if your talent don't matter, why did you say in the show, damn, I lost two artists? You said that about when you were talking about Johnny, and then right after that, you uh, that's when Paris came up and said, you know, I'm not fucking with you no more. And you said, damn, I didn't lost two artists already. So, oh, you don't fuck with a girl, Rich, get out of here. And then, Johnny gets pissed off. I guess somehow Diamond gets thrown into the mix. And she was like, so why you over there fucking with that bitch right there or something? And you better not say shit else because I'm coming for your ass. I'm coming for your ass. Diamond and the audience like, okay, and? And they going back and forth throwing insults and stuff. You know, somebody looking like Hoville. You know, somebody, oh, yo mama. Johnny said, go back to L.A. with your dog. And Diamond called it. Diamond called it because she said, my daughter is here with me. And I said, oh, oh, mind you, Cisco. And then they just sitting there like, e. and I'm just sitting here like, e too. I would have did the same thing. But, you know, they was just going back and forth. Yo mama this and oh, your daddy too. He was a crack crackhead. Diamond was like, okay, and he was a crackhead. So what's the point? I was like... True, so what's the point of saying that? You know, they were just going back and forth, but then all of a sudden, this different voice come out of Johnny like, don't talk to me right now, and all this stuff. I was like, what the fuck? Somebody was like, okay, Nicki Minaj, and I said, mm -hmm. And then when they get Johnny off the stage, here comes uh, 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 Diamond looking over at uh, Cisco, and you need to shut the fuck up because I got your ass next. Cisco stopped and said, bitch, what? I kind of would have said the same thing. Like, girl, get the fuck. Everybody is out here laughing. And so I'm going to laugh too. Y'all putting on the show for us. So therefore, let me hee hee ha ha. Okay? And he was like, bitch, you the only reason why I'm on, on you on this show is because of me. I said, mm, y'all like throwing that shit around. Y'all really do. But it was a mess. It was a mess. Oh, and look. Okay. So, you know, they bring back with Chrissy and Chink. Talking about their situation, right? Mm, clear that shit up. Talking about their situation, right? Okay? And, you know, Ching claims that, you know, when he in D.C., he get his own home and his wife is in her own home. Okay? 
Chrissy, I felt like, you know, they're not together right now. They're having their issues. She was like, if Chink was to get a divorce right now and take her back, she'll go back right to him. And, you know, next thing you know, out of nowhere, they weren't even up there for a good minute talking. And Chrissy was like, and then you out here with all these people. And I don't even know these people, so I don't know what you're doing. And then you got me struck, man. You know, I'm sitting here like, bitch, where the fucking tears come from? First of all, Chrissy... You tried. Your eyebrows looked a fool. Okay? And I was very offended because I couldn't even concentrate. You know, the white, it was nice or whatever. Mm, the little throat, I guess. I wish you darken up your hair a little bit. You know, but your eyebrows. Your eyebrows and that hair color on you, it just made. And that hair style, it just brought out your age. And I was, I was just offended. Like, deeply deeply offended at the fact that your eyebrows look like that okay look no have makeup go do it again okay go wipe them off and tell them to go pencil it back in okay you know get you you know somebody was playing games with you and they was just said april fools with you okay and i was just like you looking a fool but other than that you know chink was they was like chink do you understand where um uh, she coming from girl chink said no <laughs> Listen, and I laugh only because it irks me because, look, I talk shit about some of these motherfuckers on their show, but I see some of their characteristics that I have done, like, in their mindset a little bit. Like, you sometimes you just don't want to deal with shit. Cause, and I probably would have said the exact same thing. Like, bitch, fuck your tears right about now. Okay, you do too fucking much. At least Chrissy admitted that, hey, she was doing a much. She was doing much um, too soon and all that stuff. She was forcing it or whatever. Then come the fucked up part of the most fucked up part. Yes, I was not here for Chrissy going in on Erica the way that she did because I felt like, hey, bitch, is this your storyline trying to get on? You know, every time you on here, you talking about Erica and all that shit. But, <laughs> but Erica just, Erica, I want somebody to knock her off. I don't want to wish bad on no one. I really don't because I don't want that shit to, you know, come back on me and, and, and have my shit fucked up, whatever. But, Erica, you just not in this light, okay? You came on to Love & Hip Hop and nobody knew you. Bitch, you came from the, the... What we knew you from was on that couple of episodes where you was working for Kourtney Kardashian and Khloe Kardashian and Dash Store, okay? That was it. That was it. All right, and then you come on here, um, you get your ass, you know, be, I don't know, was it Chrissy or Kim Bella? One of them hoes whooped your ass, you know, and probably was Chrissy. I don't know. I don't know. Somebody whooped her ass or tried to whoop her ass or whatever. And now all of a sudden, because Chrissy and them gone, now you think that you like to start the show, I guess, I guess, and that you put everybody on. And now that gives you the right to talk shit about everybody to Mona instead of talking that shit into their faces. Okay, they talked about the fight between her and Chrissy and how, you know, that happened in the club. Okay, fine. We got that out the way. Um, not only that, she's talking shit about how Chrissy looked. Yeah, we now did that. She's talking shit about how old she is. And if she would have turned tricks or whatever, I would have put that in a book and it would have sold a whole lot more. Okay, what she needs to do when she said that shit about Chrissy just being an old bitch that ain't going to never have kids or some shit like that. That's when I was over it. I said you don't do no shit like that. You do not curse a bitch womb like that. Because, look, I hope you and Bad Wall ain't trying to have no kids. And all of a sudden, something happened that you can't have no kids, okay? Like, come the fuck on. You do not do that. You That was the lowest of the lowest of the dirtiest shit ever, okay? But, you know, if Chrissy said something about your kid, which I heard that she kind of did in that first fight... Then I can understand a little bit, but still, I want this bitch to be knocked down off her pedestal so fucking fast. Like, bitch, you rose up a little bit too quick, and you can easily, just as high as you got up there, you can just easily get knocked the fuck down, okay? You talking shit like you on a fucking Rihanna, Nicki Minaj, first lady type of motherfucking level, bitch. And you still down there. Outside of reality TV, what would people know you for? Outside of... Showing your ass and being with Bow Wow, what would people know you for? Without having to think about it. Nothing. Okay? So, that was just fucked up. I was just sitting here like, did this bitch really just say that? And they ain't even let Chrissy respond. They just went to commercial break. I said, ain't that some shit? But at the moment, it's like, what's the point? Because the bitch ain't there. So, they're going to end this shit with... um. 
Diamond and, 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 and Cisco and Rich and, 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 you know, they got Diamond Mama up there. They got Cisco Mama up there. Uh, I actually kind of respect Cisco Mama a little bit because she not she wasn't out there trying to show out. You know, they was talking about, I don't give a fuck all the shit that they was talking about because it was just bullshit. People was up there lying. And this was the main bitch that was lying. I know you're trying to protect your daughter, Miss Strawberry, whoever the fuck you are. But your daughter called your daughter, your granddaughter a dog, okay? Let's, let's be clear. In other interviews, she said that, you know, that was the first thing that came to her mind on the show when she was trying to explain it. She was like, that's just my dog in the background, okay? She said that herself. Cisco said that that's what she was, he was told, okay? She didn't say, oh, my dog, I got to go home to my dog or whatever on the show like that. No, this is, she said it, okay? So quit trying. And she was trying to justify it all. And I was just like, girl, everybody in the audience was like, bitch, we saw the season, so what the fuck are you talking about? You can keep on, but we got tape, you know? And Diamond was just, uh, I was just over it, okay? And they was like, how did you think that you was going to come out here, be with some man, and then I know where to live at? And she was like, well, that wasn't the plan. I was, we were supposed to live together, but when he saw the car service, he put me elsewhere. Cisco's like, girl, that wasn't true. I didn't think she was actually coming out here. They asked Cisco, mama, how did she feel about him? Um treating her because Cisco want to bring up well I did this and I was going through this as a child and all that stuff and yada 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 and you know at first Cisco mama was on that same page like you know what he did to her was wrong but you know he did go through a lot of stuff but you also got to see what type of woman will leave their child at home to come follow after a man like that and I said good point mama good fucking point you know and that got um damn a little heated i do see my daughter okay i see my daughter at least twice a month at least twice a month again was like bitch what the whole audience was like what damn it said oh so that ain't good enough for y'all she right said she backstage with me right now i said girl mm. Then they talked about Erica. I don't know why they keep on interjecting Erica up in this shit. Erica doing her stuff on the, um, you know, pre-recorded talking about how disgusted she is with Diamond to call her child a dog and all that bullshit. Then Johnny Blaze, mind you, Johnny Blaze can't stand Diamond, but Johnny Blaze got pissed off at what Erica was saying because she can't stand Erica. And she was talking about her city uh, titties t t sagging and all this shit. And then, you know, basically they ended the thing talking about something dead. Um, Rich and Diamond going to the bathroom and fuck. And they was talking about Mike's off and all this shit. And, okay, Diamond said that they did. And Rich said that they did. And, um, you know, Johnny was like, be fucking real, Rich. Because I know you fucked me up in the bathroom. I was on all fours. I was on my knees. I'm I'm a freaky bitch. So, I know if you can do some shit like that, you did some shit like that with this bum-ass bitch. I said, you know what? And they're going to tease saying that there's some new audio that we didn't hear of. You know, but they're not going to play it until next week. I mean... It was cool. I gave y'all a full ass review. Maybe because I'm on, but um uh uh it is what it is. It was alright. I had a chuckle here or there, but you know, some shit. I just didn't understand on certain parts why the fuck was Tara sitting up on the stage and she had nothing to do with this whole first part. But hey, it is what it is. I will see you guys later. Peace.